1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 25, we are standing on the starting line of a new year, and our life's race, the sprint that is 2021, holds many unknowns. Um, we just completed, and I hate talking about it, but we kind of have to, we just completed the craziest and most unsettling year in many of our lifetimes. How many of you would like to do that one over? Nobody. <laughs> And so it's with some fear, uh, I guess, or uncertainty, that we look to 2021 and we wonder what it will hold. I saw a cartoon picture this week of a bunch of people around the corner. There was a door marked 2021, and they were all scrunched up, and one of them had a broom handle and was just poking the door open very apprehensively, like we're not even sure if we want to go through this thing. But I think we all feel a little bit like that. But really, you know, the, t- the turning of the calendar, we make a lot of it, but it really, doesn't, it really doesn't matter all that much. It's just we are so time-oriented that we just think, wow, the calendar changed, and so I'm going to lose weight. You are not. <laughs> you said that last year. <laughs> I say that because I got on our smart scales that tell you, like, your body mass index, your You know, I'm not going to go over those stats. Let's back to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 25. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run, so run that ye may obtain. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. In our thoughts this morning, I want to share just three things from this scripture. I I felt like it was the scripture that I needed as we begin 2021. First of all, there's three actions we need to take. The first one is to run. The writer asks, don't you know that everybody runs even though only one person will receive the prize? Now, he wasn't referring, uh, he wasn't inferring that only one person can receive eternal life, but simply this, you can't win if you don't run. You can't win if you don't run. The only way to win is to run and to finish the race. So run that ye may obtain. The Christian life has been compared to many things. It's been illustrated in ways too numerous to count. But the idea of a race is, I believe, one of the best illustrations. A race actually takes some organization, some some thought. There are qualifications. There are requirements. There are goals. And the writer of 1 Corinthians is bringing that to our minds. And as we begin this new year, it's really important to remember that the Christian life doesn't just happen. It's not something we accidentally stumble upon and accidentally do. It is something that we have to think about. Too many people think that they will just sort of become a Christian by accident and they will live as a Christian just because that eternal life will just happen because it's part of life. Um, I notice as as I've been a preacher now for some years that, that almost every funeral the pastor of some kind uh, tries to, and I don't mean our pastors necessarily, but ones that I've been to, they try to preach about everybody into heaven, try to get them into heaven any way they can. And sometimes I've been to some funerals and I'm sitting there listening to the pastor talk about this guy, and I want to run up to the casket real quick and check and make sure it's the same guy, because the guy that I knew wasn't anything like the guy that they're describing. I was at a funeral years ago, and it's, it's not at any of our funeral homes. It's nobody that you know. I promise you that, so don't try to figure it out. But it was years ago, and I was at a funeral, and there was two young ladies. They were at the casket, and they were sobbing. The man had died. And they said, just think, he's up there drinking beer with Jesus. And the funeral director came over and put his arm around them and said, that's right, that's right. And it took everything in me to not run over there and... Uh, I was able to preach later on, so, but it took some self-control to not run right over there right then and, and just sort of set things straight. You know, it, that's not how it happens. You don't accidentally get to heaven. You get to heaven because you do what the scripture says. You run the race. So as you face 2021, 
I want to advise you to do this. Run. Not from your problems, but straight to the Savior who wants to help you run this race that we call life. Maybe after the beating you took in 2020, you don't have much strength to run. You don't want to run. You say, what's the point? You can't well, here's the point. You can't win if you don't run. That's what matters. If you do not run the Christian race, your life automatically ends in destruction. You don't have eternal life. You have the opposite, eternal punishment, eternal damnation. So run the Christian race so that you may obtain the prize. You say, but pastor, it's the free gift of God. I shouldn't have to run. It's, it's a free gift. You know what? It's the free gift of God that you get to run. It's the free gift of God that he invites you to participate in the race. It's the free gift of God that he even offers you a position at the starting line. It is by his grace and by his blood that you can even want to become a Christian and that he draws you and that you have the means, the ability to come and be saved from your sins. That is the free gift of God. And he gives you a place at this starting line and then you have to, by his grace and by his help, run that you may obtain now I know I look like a runner most of you think that I run uh, very often quit snickering over there I see you Um, (laughs) and quit laughing out loud brother (laughs) imagine if I went to a famous foot race Uh, Theo you do some running imagine if I showed up and walked to the starting line in my baggy jeans and casual leather shoes and my extra 45 pounds or 50 pounds They'd throw me out in a heartbeat. I don't qualify. And the only way for me to qualify for the race is for them to change the rules or for me to be changed so that I qualify. And in this Christian race, God's not changing the rules for anybody. But he's willing to change us and give us a place in the race. So run that you may obtain. Secondly, we need to regulate our lives. Not only run, but to regulate. Verse 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, or otherwise he has self-control. He has conquered self. God has conquered self, but he is also temperate in all things. He's able to regulate his life. Do you know a professional athlete doesn't just run around in circles with a bag of Cheetos in his hand? No. His entire life is consumed with the race. And so there's an entire group of foods that he won't eat. There's an entire genre of food that he will not eat. And there's other foods and protein shakes and all kinds of nasty stuff that sounds absolutely unappetizing that he will eat. And he'll jog and he'll run and he'll do stretches and he'll work out. Why? Because he is consumed with the race. And so what does he do? He regulates the rest of his life to focus in on the race. He may give up time with family and friends. He may sacrifice hobbies, maybe even financial gain, because he's striving for the mastery. He's striving for the big prize. He is temperate in all things. And why does he do it? The scripture says he does it for a corruptible trophy, for something that really doesn't matter. It's something that his grandkids will drop in the community aid bin and probably not even care about. A few months ago, I shouldn't tell you this, but I will. A few months ago, we, we, we do a pastor's retreat for a couple of days. Uh, the Planks, Malloyds, and us, we go away for a couple of days every year, spend some time together, because we, we don't actually see each other that often. And uh, so we, we get together a couple of days, and we went out Pittsburgh area this year, and Pastor Plank says, have you ever been to a Goodwill sorting facility where you come in and and you buy things by the pound. I said, no, I'm not really a huge fan of Goodwill, but sure, I'll go. And so we went. And boy, you should have seen us in there. James and Marie Plank, Matt and Christina Malloy, Solomon and Joanne Schaefer. Ever been to one of these places? Anybody know what I'm talking about? A couple of you cheapskates know. So they, they have these big tables, like, I don't know, 10, 12 feet long by five feet wide. And it's filled with junk. It's the stuff that wasn't good enough to go to the actual Goodwill store. Does that give you perspective? And these tables are on wheels. And every so many minutes, like every 15 minutes, there's a buzzer that sounds. And they bring out new tables with new stuff. 
And again, you're buying this stuff by the pound. And there's a maximum. It's really, really cheap. And there's all kinds of people in there. And they take this very seriously, actually. Like, like elbows and like, get away from me kind of serious. And I think I have pictures of Pastor and Mrs. Plank digging through some of this stuff. And I think they have pictures of us. And it was just a very enjoyable experience. Ask us sometime, maybe we'll show you. Um, but we did this, and it was a blast. But you know what made my heart sad? I was digging through one of those tables, trying to find something of value. And I found a trophy, some trophies, some awards that somebody had gotten. And I found some family pictures a man, a woman, children in there. And somebody cared so little about those things that they had literally thrown them in the goodwill and, and they were gonna, nobody was going to buy them. They were going to be thrown away. And I thought that is typical of what happens of the trophies that we look for. The stuff that we want. It's stuff that eventually is thrown away and it really doesn't matter. Now, I've only gotten one trophy in my life, one year by luck, I guess. Uh, my team won at youth camp. This is years ago. We beat all the other teams and I got this big, tall, plastic trophy. And I have that down in my basement. And every once in a while, my kids come down and they look at it. And there's this athletic man with a baseball or a baseball bat and a hat, looks just like me, and they're standing there, and they're like, Dad, how did you do this? I'm like, I don't know, actually. <laughs> we, I, I can't even throw a ball. I can't hit a ball. I don't know. We just won, and, and, and I had some great people on my team that year. I had two young people, one guy, short little fellow, named Zach Herrick, and, uh, and another one named Lindsey Musser. Anybody know them? And uh, they were on my team, and, and it was a great year. And, and uh, I noticed during that time together, there was a little spark between them. And if you glance back, there's four kids sitting with them right now. So I'd say that spark done went and caught fire. <laughs> so, told you I was going to talk about you today. It was great. I look at that trophy. And I think of Zach and Lindsay and some other people that were on that team. It was a great year. We had a lot of fun. But honestly, beyond that, that trophy doesn't mean anything to me. It's corruptible. It will pass away. And all of the achievements, maybe not a silly little trophy from youth camp, but, but, but the, the doctorates and the college achievements, the promotions, the bonuses, the prizes, the rewards, they're all nice and they're not even all bad. But they're corruptible, not in the sense that they're corrupt, like evil or, 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 or negative, but they're corruptible, they're burnable, they're consumable, and they really don't matter. But friend, in 2021, the race that we're running, we are not running for a prize like that. We are running for the incorruptible prize. So regulate your life. Do what it takes to be a Christian in this year. For some of you, that's going to mean something different than someone else. But do what it takes to get into your Bible. Amen? Do what it takes, and you, we literally have no excuse now with technology. You say, I have trouble reading, then listen to the Bible. If you're like me, and I'm pretty sure I have ADHD, and if you've worked with me, you're pretty sure that I do too, because I'll be like, hey, squirrel, want to go ride bikes? Um, I forgot what I was going to say, literally, <laughs> it just kicked in. It just kicked in. Let me pull it together here. We're going to do this thing. I literally lost my train of thought so bad. Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. So with my ADD, I think I have it. I'm pretty sure. I think there's like a couple hundred people here judging me. <laughs> uh, but I, I like to listen to the Bible. And I like my Bible app. It's called Bible.is that I use as a reading plan. And I found out you can speed it up. You can listen to it twice as fast. That blesses my heart. <laughs> Because I, I really like that. I want to hear it quickly. I played it in the car the other day, and my wife said, what are we doing? This is making me sick. I said, I'm listening to the Bible. Well, how can you do that? So she's not going to be able to listen to the Bible at double speed, but honestly, I get more out of it. I like to get that information quickly and let it, let it be processed, and it keeps my attention. I'm not saying you have to do that, and don't you dear spiritualize me for doing that. But I want you to do what works for you to draw closer to God. Will you determine with me this Sunday morning you're going to do that? That if you're struggling with your Bible reading, you will do what it takes. If you can't read the print, buy a bigger Bible. They still make Bibles, you know. If the study Bible you had last year didn't work out, put it on the shelf and buy a new one. 
Because you've got to do what you can do to grow close to God. It blessed my heart this morning. I went out to our bus. It was sitting out in the parking lot. I needed to talk to somebody. And I walked out to the bus. And Doug, I'm just going to mention you. Doug Schaefer was sitting out there in that bus waiting for the bus captain to get there. And his Bible was laid out across the steering wheel. And he was reading God's word in the bus. You say, well, he should have done that at home. No, I'm thankful that he brought his Bible and laid it out across the steering wheel and was reading. He was redeeming the time. He was feeding his soul. You do what you can do to regulate your life, to live for God. For some of you, you're going to pray on the way to work. Some of you are going to pray beside your bed. Some of you are going to pray uh, wherever it may be as you're cooking breakfast. I don't care where it is. I don't care how you pray. I don't care how you read, but make sure that you are devoting your life to God that you are regulating your life to run this race. Amen. Run, regulate, why? That you may obtain. The third thing is the musicians are coming. We're going to be singing 132 together in just a moment in the chorus book. But I want you to run, regulate, that you may receive the incorruptible prize that awaits. It's yours. You know, for an athlete to win a competition, he has to envision victory. He doesn't win by accident. He has to possess it by faith and then work to make that a reality. We just came through hunting season. I'm not really a hunter, but I went with my boys. And I'm convinced that the only reason you guys go out there is because you can see in your mind that big buck before you ever go into the woods. I'm convinced that when we go fishing and we can't see below the surface, we, we can see that big bass and we, we work toward it. Those of you that are athletic, you can, you can see yourself crushing that, that ball and hitting that home run at the bottom of the ninth. You envision victory. I don't go fishing when I think I'm going to catch no fish. I don't go to lose. I go to win. When you play ball, you don't go into it, at least if you're successful, saying, oh, I'm going to lose this thing. No, that's stupid. You go to win. you got to taste victory, and then you got to work toward it. And spiritually, I think we're defeating ourselves. Oh, Sister Knapp can have victory, but not me. Sister Hare can have victory, but not me. Brother Cassidy can have victory, but not me. Well, not with that attitude, you won't. But run that you may obtain and regulate your life so that you may run and you will receive. It's promised in scripture. It's there for us. The reward is there. Let's envision it. Let's look for it. Would it surprise you if Jesus Christ came back in 2021? No, of course not. Signs of the times are everywhere. So let's look forward and let's adjust our lives as the Holy Spirit leads us to the place where we can be ready. Let's run so that we may obtain. We're going to be singing number 132 together. I invite you to stand with me. Simply says, I'm too far from where I started. This, I guess, is sort of our theme song around here. Um, We've sung it for years. We love it. But I hope it just hasn't become a a theme song that we just know, okay, we're going to sing this. No, we're in a race. And we're too far from where we started. We can't quit now. And if in the crowd this morning or in those watching online, if you say, I haven't even begun the race, I've given up on God, now's the day to start. Make this your starting line. Make now your starting time. And run that ye may. Let's sing together 132. If anybody needs to pray, the altar's open. If you want to pray online, Brother Gilly's standing by. 132, let's sing it together. Many miles now lie behind me Since I started at the cross There's sin's heavy load of guilt and shame
sing verse 3. As I walk this road toward heaven, by the eye of faith I see all the things God is preparing there for me. Oh, I would not want to miss it when Christ, my Lord, his crown, this one thing. that ye may obtain. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you, Lord willing, 5.30 tonight for Sunday school, 6.30 for the evening service. May God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon.